Take a look at this photo. Anyone recognize it? it? Call it out, you can answer. Okay, there we go. This is one of the most iconic images of the World War II era, possibly the entire 20th century. Here we see General Dwight D. Eisenhower, front and center, surrounded by the paratroopers of the 101st Airborne Division. On June 5th, 1944, the night before Operation Overlord, more commonly known as the D-Day invasion. My colleagues and I at the Eisenhower Foundation are surrounded by this photo every day, including a life-size version, as we walk the halls of the Eisenhower Presidential Library and Museum. Many of you, if not all of you, have seen this photo dozens of times. So often, in fact, that you may not even give it a second thought. If pressed, you might say, oh sure, that's Eisenhower with the troops on D-Day. I've seen this image captioned, General Eisenhower encouraging the troops, General Eisenhower giving the soldiers their orders, and even General Eisenhower advising the troops. The real story behind this photo is actually far more indicative of two of the hallmarks of Eisenhower's leadership, humility and genuine human connection. You see, in this moment, Eisenhower isn't rousing the troops or giving them orders. The soldiers preparing to invade the beaches of Normandy didn't even know that Eisenhower would be with them on the night of June 5th. He just showed up and walked among the crowds of soldiers, looking for someone from his hometown, Abilene, Kansas, a small community about 30 miles east of where we are tonight. And then Eisenhower and the photographer came to this paratrooper wearing the number 23, Lieutenant Wally Strobel. Eisenhower asked Lieutenant Strobel where he was from, and Strobel said, Saginaw, Michigan. Eisenhower said something to the effect of, oh, Michigan has great fishing. He asked Lieutenant Strobel if he liked to fish, and the two began talking about their shared love of fly fishing. Eisenhower held up his fist to demonstrate a fly fishing technique. And click, the image was captured forever. Decades later, Lieutenant Strobel shared the story of their conversation with members of the Eisenhower family, the curators and archivists at the Presidential Library and Museum, and even the media, and yet this image still remains widely misunderstood. What we're seeing here is just a couple of guys from the Midwest talking about fishing. I love this story about General Eisenhower. And if you find it disappointing, if you were hoping to hear words of eternal wisdom or inspiration, I think you should reconsider. This may seem like just a fun bit of trivia, but it actually beautifully demonstrates characteristics that made Eisenhower a leader people wanted to follow. First, this anecdote shines a light on Eisenhower's humility. At this moment in history, he was the supreme commander of the Allied Expeditionary Forces, commander of not just the US Army, but all Allied soldiers serving in Europe. He was many, many ranks above the soldiers he mingled with on the evening of June 5th. Yet he didn't consider himself too big, too important, or too busy to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with rank-and-file soldiers. In fact, Eisenhower's humility extends even further than what you can see in the photos and videos from that night. What you can't see in that photo is what Eisenhower was carrying in his pocket, a note that has become known as the in-case-of-failure note. In the famous order of the day for Operation Overlord, Eisenhower told the soldiers and the world that we will accept nothing less than full victory on the beaches of Normandy. Privately, however, he knew that success was far from guaranteed. So he wrote these words. Our landings in the Cherbourg Avra area have failed to gain a satisfactory foothold, and I have withdrawn the troops. My decision to attack at this time and place was based upon the best information available. The troops, the air, and the Navy did all that bravery and devotion to duty could do. If any blame or fault attaches to the attempt, it is mine alone. Eisenhower kept this note in his pocket for several days, just in case he needed to release it. Thankfully, he never did need it, and it was later found in the trash, pulled out, and preserved. Eisenhower's humility was not limited to shaking hands and sharing fly fishing techniques. But there's something else that the fly fishing story demonstrates really nicely. Eisenhower truly valued making genuine connections with people. 
he consistently prioritized humanity over rank, position, or what he called a bright and shining image. His fishing conversation with Lieutenant Strobel wasn't a one-off or a public relations stunt. Soldiers loved Eisenhower because he visited them and talked with them every chance he got. Edward Babe Heffron, one of the famous Band of Brothers paratroopers, wrote about meeting Eisenhower when the 101st Airborne received the presidential unit citation. In his book, Brothers in Battle, Best of Friends, Heffron wrote, nobody liked a division parade. Nobody wants to hear officers talk and talk and don't say nothing. But we were all hepped up because Ike was coming. We didn't mind standing out there, not for the medal, not for the decoration, but for Ike. He was the coolest. All the guys loved him. Ike walked down the line and congratulated some of the guys personally. This willingness, or even eagerness, to connect with people beyond their rank or station was so important to Eisenhower and so effective that it became a cornerstone of his approach to diplomacy once he became president. As the president who founded Camp David, and People to People International, he said in 1956, if we are going to take advantage of the assumption that all people want peace, then the problem is for people to get together and to leap governments. If necessary, to evade governments, to work out not one method, but thousands of methods by which people can gradually learn a little bit more of each other. By the time he said those words, Eisenhower had already seen the vast ripple effects that gradually learning a little bit more of each other could have. He was a leader people wanted to follow. I've lost track of the number of articles I found about Eisenhower's leadership that all tread the same paths. Decisiveness, sticking to a task, adapting to challenges. These are all true of Eisenhower, and I think we would all agree that leaders should develop these traits. However, none of those qualities are what Eisenhower himself valued most in leaders, and I don't believe they're the reason for his enduring popularity. In 1965, he wrote an essay called What is Leadership? for Reader's Digest, in which he mentions none of those attributes. Instead, he claims, every leader should have enough humility to accept, publicly, the responsibility for the mistakes of the subordinates he has himself selected, and likewise to give them credit publicly for their triumphs. Sounds familiar, right? And if you're thinking, well, that's nice, but it really doesn't apply to me because I'm not a leader, then you'll find that Eisenhower would disagree with you. In that same essay, he wrote, whether or not they are ever singled out for prominence, anyone who does their work well, who is justifiably self-confident and not unduly disturbed by the jeers of the cynics, who stays true to decent motives and is considerate of others, is, in essence, a leader. May we all live up to this ideal. May we all take the time to talk about fishing. Thank you. <laughs>